Everyone, hi, Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another video breakdown. Once again, we listened to you guys, the listeners, and you gave us a guy that we thought we should listen to and get to know. First time I've heard of him, but like everyone else I've listened to in the past, I became a fan. Okay, the person is called King Cruel, as you can see behind me. This came from his debut album, Six Feet, I believe, Under the Moon. Hang on once, I want to make sure I'm saying that correctly. Six Feet Beneath the Moon, I'm sorry. Six Feet Beneath the Moon, and the song is called Easy Easy. All right, here we go. It's interesting to me, I was looking at his Wikipedia page, and of course, they can't define him either, like everyone else even covering. They have him down as punk jazz with hip-hop, dark wave, and trip-hop, which basically means is they can't really define him, so they're not sure what to call the guy. Predictable. Okay, also, I didn't know this. Uh, he came with the name King Cruel, they thought it came from, people think it comes from Donkey Kong. That's not true, actually. That came from the Elvis Presley movie, King Creole. And that's where he took that from. Okay, here we go. Um, the song, again, is Easy Easy, and I want to break it down like we've done before. Now, he has an incredible voice. This guy's only 26 years old, and he started singing this song when he was 18, and he wrote this song when he was 14. Incredible, again, how, how talented these guys are. And incredible voice. He wrote this when he was 14 years old, and he's a great guitar player. Really, really good at it. And this song captures perfectly with the video the angst and turmoil you're going to feel when you're a teenager, and you're on the cusp of having to be responsible. But you don't have to be. Um, I remember that time, and it was a great period of time. Like you're trying to learn about yourself and trying to figure out who you are, and you want to be seen as responsible, but you don't really have to be. It's just a great period in life. And I remember, I still remember that time, and I'm sure that all of you do, who enjoyed this song so much. Okay, here it goes. Well, same old Bobby, same old beat, and it goes, yeah. You're looking at it as dead-end job, dead-end streets. Is this all that I'm ever going to be? Will my parents' life be mine? Because you start to see your parents not as your parents anymore, but as people. And that's a scary thing to do, but that's reality. We got to get out of this place. Will I escape? Am I, am I, is, are these streets going to be where I'm going to be from? The same old cars, the same old streets. Yeah. You start to get familiar with things around your neighborhood, around your city, around your town. Is this where I'm going to wind up? And for a lot of people, it becomes like almost claustrophobic living like that. And then you go, man, I'm sure I told you so. And with your dead end job, that's been eating away your life. How did I get to this point in my life? And trust me, a lot of people I work with, when I say work with on a client level, people I even work with on a professional level feel exactly this way. I think the number hit last year, of course, with the virus, everything's going to change. But I think it was at a record high, 85% of Americans hate their job, hate what they're doing for a living. So those words are really strong. And with your dead-end job that's been eating away your life, it's like a cancer. But you go home and he does that really well. Um, that's how you feel. And you feel a little inside the trouble and strife, and now you spend your evenings searching for another life. You question yourself, how did things go so wrong? And what could I have done differently? And you end up becoming a coulda, woulda, shoulda guy. I should have done this. I could have done that. I should have done this. You know, I would have done this if I had a chance. And you, you start to reflect as you get older. Like, what did I really accomplish with my life? It was, a, was it a life of success? Was it a life of failure? Was it a life of mediocrity? I remember a quote from a movie where there were two characters were talking, and the guy was saying, well, about the, what they had accomplished or not accomplished. And the person said, I've lived a life of mediocrity. I could have been so much more, and I turned out to be actually in the end so little. And I'm not, and I remember. There is a, a great quote from Master and Commander, a movie with Russell Crowe, and this officer who's not rising through the ranks says to this younger officer who is rising through the ranks and talking, and Russell Crowe makes a comment because the officer commits suicide jumping off the ship, and he says, not every time does a man turn out to be the man that he wants to be, that he thought to be. I'm, butcher, I'm butchering the quote, but the, basically the point was, you know, we all want to grow up to be a certain kind of man. 
and not all the time does that work out. We fall short of that. It was a great quote. And that, and so I want to go back to that. You feel a little inside the trouble and strife, and now you spend your evenings searching for another life. Yeah, because you start to look around you. And the video is really good at capturing that because he's hanging around with a friend and they're running around. And at one point, he's on a train with a guy who's dressed like a typical London businessman with the derby and the white shirt and the black tie and the black suit. And he's looking at him. They're looking at each other. And he's thinking, like, am I going to turn into this guy? And um, is that going to be my future? You know, he's, he's smoking some weed. He's smoking cigarettes. They're running across some train tracks. You're trying to figure out, who am I? What am I? And what's happening also at this point is your body's changing. You're turning into a man or a young woman. You're seeing things for the first time. My parents aren't perfect. They're not gods. Okay, you're developing a sense of independence and even more importantly, a sense of identity. Who am I? What am I? Where am I going? This song is perfect for that. And he did a really, really great job. The next chorus, verse two, all good, but he has, he, he quotes someone. It goes, because if you're going through hell, we just keep going. All right. Where'd that come from? It came from Winston Churchill. Okay. And he said, if you're going through hell, just keep going. He said this in 1943, during the midst of World War II, when things were still dicey in 43 for the you know British and the Americans and the Russians. And because if you're going through hell, we just keep going. That's it. Meaning we as a nation have to continue to go forward. And interesting how he quoted someone who had such influence on Britain during that time period. Here's what I want, so it's a great song. Here's what I want to say. I give him a lot of credit in talking about issues that were unpleasant and uncomfortable for him when he talks about himself. As a kid, he struggled with discipline issues and did not want to go to school. And he also went back between his mother and father's house. I'm not clear if they were divorced or separated, but... It seems that his mother was much more lenient than his father, who had a lot of rules. And dad, it's, he says that my dad had to physically carry me to school. It says this is in the Wikipedia. He said he was also sent to a psychiatric hospital in London where he was treated and tested. I'm sorry. And he felt staff was wrong, did wrong about his issues. He hated them and would hide in his room. He also, talked, he also has talked about some of his own mental health issues, including depression and insomnia. And some of his lyrics, which is not an easy thing to do, but a lot of young artists today are showing the courage to be open about their issues, which is a credit to them because it really inspires so many people to seek help. However, there were to me major factors why at 26 he is still making music and moving forward in his life and has not taken the self-destructive pattern that so many musicians have taken today. He's still touring. He was about to go touring when, of course, all hell broke loose around the world. So everything is on hiatus for right now. I want, to bring out, I want to bring out six different points. His girlfriend, Charlotte Patmore, collaborated with him on a photography and videography, pro, video, uh, gr videography projects, and they had a child, a daughter, born to them recently. And there's a picture of him from The Guardian taking his daughter on a stroll, taking his young daughter out. He has made companion art books with his brother, by the name of Jack Marshall, who also did the album art, I'm assuming, for this album. That was his brother. His mother, Rachel Howard, in 2002, was actually his manager for a period of time. She's also a costume designer and artist. His father, who had to carry him to school, spoke on the album The Ooze, and Paintings for the New Record, who was also an art director. Birth of a Child. When she was born, he, he says this in this article, The Guardian, she was the busy, busy, biggest expression of life and love. And he also adds in the article, I'm more open, accepting, and interested. He sings to her. His comment from The Guardian interview in February 2020, I was lucky I had a core group of people around me that I loved. Wow. How unusual to hear that from somebody young. I had a core cool group of people around me that I loved. Okay, why am I saying this? Here's what I want to share. It's a great song. He's a great artist. Once again, I'm a fan. I'm hooked. 
he took all that happened to him as a child, and as he got older, he brought his family closer to him rather than pushing them away. And he became stronger from it. There's a great lesson here. When people love you, they look out for you. Okay? Even his dad, who was a disciplinarian, is involved with his son. You hear what he said? He spoke on his album. It's a great lesson about fame. The people that truly keep you grounded, that can truly keep you grounded, if they are stable, of course, is family. What better role model than that? He realized that they have my best interest. His girlfriend, who he had a child with, who does this, his brother who does this, his mother who does this, his father who does this. Now he's a dad, and clearly a good dad because you saw the picture, and he got lessons from his dad on how to be a dad. He learned. How many times have I talked about so many artists being truly alone? Forget about their lyrics talking about suicide and death and I hate myself and this is the end, but it comes forth like an almost like an odor of unhappiness from the music that they're truly alone and their only friends are drugs and alcohol and quote quote friends that just want to exploit them for drugs and money and you know hanging on to someone they consider to be famous for the moment, but they're not your friends. Okay? His music may indicate that he was lost as a teenager because he talks about that, but he's clearly well rooted as a young adult. Continue to make great music, Archie, whatever, define it, however you want to define yourself as, you know, as the king or as Archie, it's irrelevant. Keep on making great music. But in conclusion, guys, everyone that's watching this, find people that truly care about you. I hope it's your family. It may not be. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. But find a core group of people that truly care about you, that want the best for you, and will there to keep you on terra firma when you start going to the sky. That's it from here. Appreciate it. Please keep on watching, commenting. Thank you, Sunridge of Nevada.